I'm going to clamp this string right up next to that mark. I want to make sure when I put the string in the starting clamp that it's down in the bottom of the jaws of the clamp. Now I'm going to pull 86 pounds of tension on my wise tension head because that's as high as it goes. I don't see any slippage whatsoever. If this clamp will hold 86 pounds of tension, this clamp will hold what you normally string a tennis racket at. Let me show you a little bit more about my two starting clamps. This is the Gamma clamp that's got the shiny springs on it. This is the Bottle Lock clamp that's got the dull looking springs on it. This one has three, this one has two. This one is hard to open, to squeeze like this. This one is easy to open and squeeze like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Bottle Lock clamp, which some people proclaim to be the best clamp going. Okay, and instead of putting the string in the bottom of the clamp, I'm going to put it in the top of the clamp and find out what happens. I'm going to same string here with the same little mark, and I'll clamp it down. And I'm going to use the same tension, 86 pounds. I'm all set up for 86 pounds. Well, I guess even the best of clamps fail every once in a while. If I clamp this string right here, which is the right string, this right string goes around the top of the frame and comes down here for the left string. So now if I pull tension on the left string, I'm pulling this string, which goes around the frame, which is pulling this string. That is double pulling. What I was doing the first time now is pulling reference tension or trying to pull reference tension on this string and this string at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull both strings at the same time. I'm pulling two strings but I'm not double pulling. Now what I have is although I'm pulling at 60 pounds since I'm pulling two strings in parallel with each other and not in series with each other, I have half the reference tension on this string, 30 pounds, and half the reference tension on this string, which is 30 pounds. If I look at these strings now, since they're under tension, it doesn't matter if it's 30 pounds of tension or 60 pounds of tension. If I clamp the string, and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have my clamps adjusted right. Okay, if I clamp the string, the string has to be going straight through that clamp, and the clamp has to be at the level of the string. So if the clamp stays at this level right here, and I pull tension on this string, then there's less chance of it slipping in that clamp. If I just release tension on both of these strings because I'm pulling both at the same time, my clamp will fall down. Now if I pull tension on either string, this one or this one, it has to raise this clamp up when I'm pulling tension. Okay? And if I'm pulling at an angle coming out of this string, there's a better chance of that string slipping in that clamp than if it is at the correct level. So Using the Yusuke method now, he pulls tension on the two center mains both at the same time. This string, both of these strings are perfectly straight. When I clamp them, my clamp's at the correct level. The string is going straight through the clamp. There's less of a chance of that string slipping through there. I adjust my clamps so that they're not too tight to crush the string and tight enough so that they won't slip. Actually I adjust them to the point where they just won't slip. And then I try to, to ingrain in my mind what it feels like to clamp down on a string when it just won't slip. 
And that's what I do over and over and over and over and over again. If I pull 60 pounds of tension on one of these strings, either this one or this one, there's a chance that I might not have this clamp adjusted properly and it could slip. But if I have some tension on one of these strings and I pull on the other one, then the some tension that I have will negate the tension on the other side of the clamp. The easiest way to do that is with a starting clamp. I can put a clamp outside the frame on one of those strings and remove my tension. When I remove tension, I was pulling both strings. This one that has the starting clamp on it still has tension on it. Whatever this tension is, it started out at 30 pounds, but my clamp slipped back just a little bit because of drawback. So it's going to be something less than that. But when I pull 60 pounds of tension on this string, my clamp goes back to where it was. I have 30 pounds of tension on this string. And there's less of a chance of the string slipping through this clamp because I'm effectively only pulling 30 pounds of tension against it. Because 60 minus 30 is 30. So now, when I pull tension on this string, I've got 60 pounds on this side, but I don't have 60 pounds on that side. I've got my strings clamped off now, and without even twanging the string, I'm going to know that this one's going to have a higher frequency than this one has, because this one is twice as tight as this one. Okay? Now what I can do is I can continue stringing my mains. I'm going to string one more main on the same side that has the 60 pounds of tension. Now what I could do is I could switch over to the other side, but what I normally do, I'm, I'm just using a scrap piece of string here, but what I normally do is I'll pull three mains on one side before I go back to the other. Because I've got a fixed clamp here, it isolated this string that only has half the reference tension from these three strings that has full reference tension. Now I can go back to the other side, pull the full reference tension on this string, and when I do, that's when the clamp pulls away because now I'm pulling at full reference tension. So then I can move my clamp down. What I'll normally do at this time is remove my starting clamp and then I'll string five more strings on this side. Then I'll come back, finish up this side, then I finish up that side. Now I'm ready to start stringing my racket for real. And I've got a set of polyester strings here that cost me about 20 bucks. And I don't want to mess them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Yusuke method to start my mains. I'm going to measure out what I think I need for the short side of the string, which is five racket lengths. I normally put the short side of the string on the left hand side of the racket, but you can do it any way you want. Even though this is a Prince 03 racket, it's a hybrid racket, there's no ports on the uh, sides of the racket, so it doesn't matter which side is the short side and which side is the long side. Okay, I'm all ready to pull 55 pounds of tension on both center mains here. And because I was, use, because I was using a different string, I'm going to readjust my clamps here. And I'm going to use my starting clamp on the outside of the string to hold the tension on that clamp. Then I'm going to pull tension on the left main. And I'm going to run two more mains on this left side of the tennis racket, or the short side of the tennis racket.
Now, what I could have done, rather than using a starting clamp to hold some tension on this string, I could have just held this string here with my hand while I pulled tension on this side. But this is sort of like a third hand. So, I like using the starting clamp. Now I'm pulling tension, or reference tension, on the right main. I'm going to remove my starting clamp and then clamp this off.